What's up guys? Paul Monroe here. And I'm gonna teach you how to read some drum music. Let's do it. Hey everybody. Welcome to How to Read Drum Music for Beginners. I am Paul Monroe. We're gonna jump right into this. So what we're looking at right here is a basic drum rhythm. This is what they look like. This is how they're they're written out. They're written out in many different ways. This is just one format of it. You could even hand write it. I hand wrote for many years and still do. Um, sometimes it's really easier to just jot something down. But there's a lot of computer programs out there now that'll do this. Uh, Mike'sLessons.com is a really good place to have a, a free tool where you could write out rhythms like this. So I would check that out. I think it's called Groove Script if you want to check, uh, Groove Scribe, Groove Scribe if you want to check that out. But yeah, this is just a, a basic um, drum notation and um, just one way of writing it, like I said. And what we're going to be learning today is the very basics of it. We're not going to be getting into any kind of advanced reading techniques or anything like that. This is just the very basics to get you started so you could read some basic rhythms uh, snare drum rhythms easily and then um, you know get into some drum set stuff so we're mainly going to be uh, focusing on quarter notes uh, over here and eighth notes like this and 16th notes like this and we'll you know we'll get into more details of what those look like in a little bit and we're also going to be focusing on just the hi-hat the snare and the bass drum is the hi-hat line snare drum and bass drum line which we'll talk about in a little bit and the reason why we're going to be focusing on those instruments is because when we're playing beats, these are the three instruments that we mainly use. There's toms involved too, which start getting in on, uh, you know, those notes start becoming uh, noticeable on more of these lines and they start getting, you know, filling up. We're in between the lines, on the lines, and they all represent different toms. We're not going to get into that to confuse you. We're just going to stick to the uh, kick, snare, and hat. I will mention right now, we'll get right into the lesson, these things over here, these are called accents, accents, which means on these notes, you're just going to play these louder than the others. They're accented, so they're just played, you know, more loudly than the other notes. Uh, these over here are called repeats, so when you see this, instead of writing out this whole rhythm over and over and over and confusing uh, the person who's, have, you know, having to read the score, they just put these repeats in here, which just basically means repeat the measure before. So these two measures would just, you know, just repeat these two measures, basically. Um, and that's about it. That's it for the basics. By the end of this lesson, you're going to know exactly how to read all this, what all this means, the 4-4, four, four, these numbers at the top, all these notes, and uh, just stand by. So we're going to get into it right now. Let's do it. This is the note pyramid value chart. This is really cool because you're going to see that drums are very mathematical. They're very much like math. In fact, if you're really good at math, you could probably be an excellent drummer just by writing stuff down and figuring it out mathematically. So let's take a look at this. So at the top, we have the whole note. Think of that as like a whole orange or a whole pie or a whole apple. But all right, let's look, look at it as a pie, for example. So that's a whole note, which is equal to a pie, right? Now, if I cut that pie in half, that would give me two halves, as we see here. And these are called half notes. That's right. Good, good, good. You're paying attention. All right, so these are, these are our half notes. Now, two halves are equal to one whole. You see how this is mathematically correct and how easy it is? Yeah, you're an expert already. And these here, if you take a half and you cut that in half, you're going to get two quarters, right? Two quarters equals one half. Or four quarters equals two halves. Or, stay with me now, four quarter notes equals two half notes is also equal to one whole note. Make sense? This is so easy. All right, now we take a quarter note, take that in half, that equals two eighth notes, or one quarter is equal to two eighths, 
right? It's just mathematics, just fractions. Going back to, I don't know, first, second, third grade. See how that stuff was helpful when I just stayed in school? Quarter note equals two eighth notes. So if I have four quarter notes and I double that up, that's going to give me eight eighth notes. And if I double that up, that's going to give me 16 sixteenth notes. So 16 sixteenth notes. Blah, 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 blah. 16 sixteenth notes, it's a tongue twister, is also equal to one whole note. So if I took that pie and I cut it up into 16 pieces, I would get the same result. You got it? All right, there's our note pyramid value chart. And I'm really, really proud of this chart. You know why? Uh, I made it myself. I did. All right, we'll go over what we did before, so you, we'll make sure that you really get it. So drums, like I said, they're just like math. Four quarters equals a whole or a whole measure. Now we're talking about measures. Now we're going to get into some of these numbers and what this means, but four quarter notes are going to be equal to one measure. So I want you to keep that in mind. These are the quarter notes. And remember, four quarters equals a whole. So four quarter notes equals one whole measure. And eight eighth notes also equals one whole measure. And 16 sixteenth notes also equals one whole measure. And as you see by my blue arrows here, I'm showing you that four sixteenth notes are equal to two eighth notes, which we saw in the pyramid, and two eighth notes is also equal to one quarter note. Got it? I know you do. You're so good. Let's move on. Now we're going to use the same note groupings as we were working with before. Our quarter notes, our eighth notes, and our sixteenth notes, and I'm going to show you how to count them. So if we're looking at a full measure, like right here, this is a full measure, this is a full measure, and this is a full measure. So we have three full measures, and four quarters are equal to one measure or four quarter notes are equal to one measure. So all these in value, uh, mathematically, they're all equal to each other. And the way that you count the quarter notes, if I asked you to count me out quarter notes, you would count them just like the numbers are shown above. You would count them as one, two, three, four. All right, if I asked you to count me eighth notes, you would count those like this, one, and two and three and four and. All right, very simple. And now if we go down to the 16th notes, 16th notes are counted a little differently. So we're going to count them like this. One E and a, two E and a, 3E and 4E uh, and. Uh. All right. And this is one full beat right here. This is one full beat right here. This is a beat, the third beat. And this is the fourth beat, which equals one measure. So beat one, beat two, beat three and beat four. And the reason why this is important, for instance, if we were working together and I asked you to play the bass drum on the and of two for me, you would know that you would have to play it on this note right here, leaving the other ones out, or accent this note for me. Maybe I asked you to give me an accent on the E of four, so you would come over here and you would accent this note. So that's why it's important to count these out and know how to count them. All right, we're moving right along. You're doing great. Let's do it. Now we're gonna be looking at time signatures. So what is a time signature? If you look over here at my blue arrow and pointing to these numbers over here, there's a four on the top and there's a four on the bottom. That is your time signature, it's called four four. Let's look at a blown up version of that. If we go over here, this is the blown up version of that. Now, 
the 4, 4, what does that mean? The number on the top, that is how many beats are in the measure. So if you look at our top example here, this is a full measure. We have one full measure up here at the top, right? And if you count out our quarter notes, there's our beat one. Here's our beat two. Here's our beat three. And here's our beat four. Right? So that's how many beats are in the measure. There's four beats in the measure. Now we could have a combination of eighth notes and sixteenth notes and rests and all kinds of things as long as they equal four beats. Right? And we all know that we could have six, six, uh, four sixteenth notes here that would also be equal to one beat. Right? So that's how many beats are in the measure. The bottom number is the note value that gets one of those beats. So in this case, four represents the quarter note. And that is pretty much a, a very common time signature. In rock and roll, 99.9% .9 of the time, everything's gonna be in four, four. Means I'm gonna get four beats to the measure and the quarter note's gonna get one beat. Um, if this number on the bottom changes, it just changes things mathematically, okay? And it just kinda, it makes things a little confusing. So because of this is a very basic lesson, I don't wanna really get into that right now, but I will show you some examples down here that here's a common example, four, four, and then we have 12, eight, which means you have 12 beats in the measure and the eighth note gets one full beat, which means two 16th notes would be equal to one beat as well, instead of four 16th notes, which is equal to one quarter. So the mathematics just change on that. Let's not confuse ourselves. And then we got seven, eight here for the same reason, seven beats to the measure, eighth note gets one beat. Now these numbers uh, <laughs> on the left and right, we got three, four, and six, eight. So three, four means that we have three beats to the measure and the quarter note gets one beat. So three beats to the measure to count that out, it would be like one, two, three, one, two, three, or one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. That's four measures of three, four. On the other side, we have six, eight, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, some would argue that if it's right here, it's the same tempo, one, two, three, four, five, six, or four, five, six, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Technically, you would play that at the same tempo, but it's just written differently. One's in six, eight, and one's in three, four. So mathematically, as it's written, it just has to be correct. But for this, the whole point of this was just to show you this time signature, what that is, four, four. Now you know what the top number represents and the bottom number. And just know that for the most part, four, four is what we deal with. All right, counting measures. All right, so how do we count measures? What is a measure? And what is this thing over here, this tempo and this little quarter note equals 100? What does all that mean? So these are our measures. We already know our time signatures, four, four. So we have four beats to a measure. Beat one, whoops, missing my highlighter. There we go. Beat one. B2, B3, and B4. But this is one full measure as seen here by this arrow. One measure. This is measure two. This is measure three. And this is measure four. And this is interesting. So what does this mean? The quarter note equals 100. So our quarter note is our beat. We have four beats per measure, and that was represented by our top number here, but this means 100. What does that mean? That means that the quarter note is gonna play 100 beats per minute, okay? So I have a metronome here on my, on my iPhone. I'm gonna play it for you. Metronome is just something that counts beats per minute, and it's something that as, you're, as a musician, you would wanna use to keep steady time. So as you practice, and you know, hopefully you're practicing every day, you should be practicing with a metronome, whether you're a singer or a guitar player, bass player, violin, I don't care what you play, drummer especially, um, you have to be able to have good time and use a metronome for that. So I'm gonna set my metronome for 100 beats per minute, which means technically this, but at the same time, if I had a stopwatch 
and I press start, and I press start on my metronome, when one full minute goes around on that stopwatch, my metronome would have clicked exactly 100 times. Isn't that cool? So if a musician asks, hey, Paul, you, you want to play this song? Yeah, what tempo are you playing it at? What, what tempo do you want to play it at? I would say, oh, let's try it at 120 or 140 or 144 or 98 or 63. You know, it doesn't matter as long as it's you know, in time, and if this, the song is slow, it's going to be in the 60s to 80s. If the song is really fast, it's going to be like 180, 200 beats per minute, like techno and things like that. So here's 100 beats per minute, just so you get an idea. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. That's the, the tempo of the song. I don't know, just making stuff up. <laughs> but that's 100. So if I was to play it at 120, Let's go, I don't know, let's go 134. This is 134. A little faster. So you, uh, that's going to click 134 times in one minute. Got the idea? <laughs> that's about it. So that's what I wanted to point out. So this is your beats per minute. You always want to set your tempo at that beats per minute. And then always know, uh, okay, I want you to play four measures, and then I want you to stop. So then you would know, okay, I'm gonna set my metronome for 100, I'm gonna play four measures, and then I stop, and that's the end of the song, and they pay you $500, and that's it, that's the end of the day. Wouldn't that be cool? All right, yeah. Let's move on. Identifying sound. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, we're gonna be focusing mainly on the hi-hat, the snare, and the bass drum because these are the instruments that are mainly used in beats. And when you're looking at drum notation, as you're looking at my example here, it's very simple. When you're looking at drum notation, a lot of times on the left, you'll see something like this. Again, I don't have my highlighter. Oi, yo, 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 all right, there you are. Late to the party again. All right, H, H, S, N, B, D. By now, you should probably take a pretty good guess of what that means. So HH means hi-hat, hi-hat. This is your hi-hat line. Those X's represent the hi-hat. And remember those accents, those little arrows up here, those represent accents. And as you can see, some of the um, notes now are merging together. So they start merging together, they start layering on top of each other, but you could read them just as you know we saw them before, as quarter notes, eighth notes, and sixteenth notes. Here's a combination of them, as you could see. So HH represents the hi-hat on the top line. SN represents the snare drum, usually on the second line right here. So here's our snare drum line. And BD is our bass drum. Sometimes it says kick, sometimes it says KCK. Um, you know, sometimes at the top it says hat. Um, just depends. But this is a basic layout. Uh, hi-hat, snare, and kick. All right, got it? Moving on. Well, it's time to sing and play, folks. I studied with a lot of great drummers, and still I hear today that if you can't sing it, you can't play it, and it makes a lot of sense. So we're going to do a little review of what we learned so far, and we're going to sing a little bit, sing these rhythms, and I'll sing them as I would as a drummer to get the idea of how to sing these rhythms. So the first one, let me get my highlighter. We have our quarter notes, okay? And I guess I'm missing the two, uh, two and three up here, but by now I guess you could uh, pretty much figure out that two comes after one and three comes after that. Yeah, I kind of forgot to put those in there, but that's okay. So the first line, just do it with me. We're going to say one, 
two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, if I was to sing that as a drummer, I usually would give it like a hi-hat type of sound, like a tss. So as a drummer, if I was to get, do four measures, again, we'll do another four measures, a little faster. One, two, three, four. You could figure out whatever sound works for you, but start getting used to using sounds because when you start playing beats like I mean, it may sound silly, but if you could represent that, it's a lot easier to apply that to the kit. It just kind of comes out because you're you know, your hands don't have any brains. It all comes from here and from your heart and your soul. So that's how I would sing that one. The second one, the eighth notes is, so if, if here's our quarter note, three and four and one, two, here we go. And one and two and three and four 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 and. And if I was to sing that as a drummer, I would say one, two, three, four, ta 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 four and two and three and four and boom. All right, so you're just feeling that pulse on the inside. And then the last one is one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So here's our tempo, two, three, here we go. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. If I was to sing that, two, three, four. Boom. Right? You get the idea? If I was to sing the whole line just as the measure as I see it, it would be exactly this. Either 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a, that's the end of the measure, or 3 4. And that's it. That's the end of the measure as written right here. And that's how you sing it. All right? So just get used to singing stuff because it really, really helps a lot. All right? Here we go. Moving on. All right. So now we're going to clap out some rhythms together. And like I said, if you can't sing it, you can't play it. So if I had my, as we could see here, um, our tempo is 80 beats per minute. So here's our 80 beats per minute. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's our 80 beats per minute. So I was to play chord notes. So do this with me. Three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, out. All right. So that's how we play our quarter notes. Then we'll play some eighth notes. Two, three, four. One and two and three and four and two. two three, four, three. Two, three, four, four. Two, three, four, out. Now we'll do sixteenth notes. Two, three, four. One and a two and a three and a four and a two. Two, two, three, four. You got the idea? So when we hear these quarter notes and we're playing 16th notes, we have to have four notes in between each beat because four sixteenths equals one beat. One, two, three, four. We have to have four notes before the next beat comes in. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's one measure right there. 
two, three, four. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, first one. Now we kind of have an idea of how to clap these out. Now I'm not going to clap them out. I'm going to sing them and see if you can sing them with me. And I'll do like maybe two measures of each. All right, we'll start with the first one. Two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Dot, 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 dot. All right, so that's the first line. Hopefully you're able to read that with me. And if you can, excellent. You're doing a great job. So it's, you know, it's really not that hard. You just have to kind of follow along and get used to it. And after a while, what's going to happen is these notes will start to look like words. You know how like you're reading a book and you're not like, you know, putting letters together to make, you're looking at words and you recognize them and just reading sentences like they're nothing, right? And what's going to happen is once you start practicing this stuff, it's the same thing. The same thing is going to happen when you start reading music. They're going to start looking like words. You don't even have to, you know, read each note one at a time, you'll be measures ahead or, you know, plenty of measures ahead. And you could really skip ahead and know what you're going to play before you even get there. Let's do the second one. Here we go. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Da, 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 da. Da 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 so I apologize for that. I'm trying to get you going here, but just read along and don't pay attention to the highlighter if that's the case. <laughs> All right, so let's do the third one. Here we go. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Ta, 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 all right, let's tackle the last one. Here we go. Two, three, four, one, two, here we go. Da 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 yeah, if you did that and you read it with me, excellent. There's a lot of books that you can get that has, um, I think Louis Belson and 4-4 is a really, really good one. Syncopation is a really good book that you can get that has all these kind of rhythms and you can just read along or play with your snare drum. All right, hopefully um, that helped you out a little bit and we're going to move on. So those are the basics and this is a basic beat. Um, you should be able to read this by now. It may, looked, it may have looked confusing to you before on the first slide when you first st saw this uh, lesson, but it should make more sense to you now. Now look at the top line here. You already know what all this means. So you have your hi-hat line, your snare, and your bass drum. And if you were to sing the hi-hat line to me, you know that it would sound like t -t 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 and then the snare drum is on 
beats. Now this is two eighth notes, so that equals one quarter. So that's one beat. So this must be beat two. This is beat three, and this is beat four. And what you'll notice is the snare drum. In fact, in, for most of rock and roll, the snare drum is on two beats two and beats four. So it's consistent throughout all these measures that the snare drum is on beats two and beats four. So you could sing that as one, two, three, four, one, two, two. And then the bass drum is on one and it's on the three and of the next beat. So it's on one, it skips the two. So there's a rest, a quarter note rest. That's what that is, a quarter note rest. So you don't play anything on a rest. So there's your chord note rest that is equal to one beat as well. And that takes up, you know, two th these eighth notes here. So now we're done here. And now you got three and, and then a rest on four and. Same thing. So this is consistent. The, this measure is the same exact thing as this measure. I've just repeated everything. So if I was to sing this, I would, I would sing the bass drum line as doom, 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 doom. doom. Doom, 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 right? And if I was to sing the whole beat, it would sound like doom, jet, doom, doom, jet, 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 buddy on a boy on a big boy. All right, so you get the idea there. That's how you sing that one. That's that beat. Now look at the second beat underneath it. What's interesting is that it's the same exact beat. Doom, jet, doom, doom, jet, doom, jet, doom, doom, jet. Same exact beat, right? And um, the only difference is it's just written a little differently. So look at the top. The eighth notes are all together. So there's a grouping of four here, and there's another grouping of four here. Well, down here, it groups them in twos. You see that? It's the same value. Here's beat one, beat two, beat three, and beat four. It's the same value. And they layer the notes. So now the bass drum, instead of being on its own separate line like it is on the top, now it's equal to the hi-hat line and the snare drum line. It layers on top of it, right? Look at that. So it's just a different way of... Um, of writing it. And um, I'm just showing you this because if you get some drum books and you start looking through them, you may get confused like, what is this? That's not what Paul showed me. And this may not even be the only way. You'll see different variations of it, but for the most part, you'll get the idea. Um, I think I'm able to play these clips for you. So what I'm going to do is the, the the second beat here, oh, is the same as the first, doom, dat, doom, doom, dat, doom, dat, doom, doom, dat. And the second one is doom, doom, dat. Hopefully you could see that, and I'll play those for you. And um, that's about it. That's the basics of how to read drum musics. Well, drum musics. That's the basics on how to read drum music. You can get some basic books right now and start going through them and learning some new beats because now you know how to read. So check out these beats and thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to my channel below if you like this video and hit the little bell next to it if you're on a computer because that bell will let you know when I have uh, new videos coming out in the future. And if you like this video, definitely hit the like button. Um, I really, really would appreciate it. And to make a long story short, YouTube will pay me to keep giving you stuff for free. And I think that's pretty cool. So let's keep this channel going. I'll play these beats for you. Thanks, guys. And they're not going to play? There we go. That's the first one. Now it's going to go to the second one. Oh, no, we missed it. Oh, no, here's the second one. Here's the second one. That was the first one. Here's the second one. So it starts out with two bass drums. Doom, doom, ba, boom, da, boom, boom.
That's it. Hope you liked it.